So, it has been just over two weeks since Dream League Soccer 2023 came out, and I have formed some opinions. So here is my 100% honest review of Dream League Soccer 2023. No holding back, 100% honest. Let's get started. So first, I want to talk about the new UI and quality of life changes that we get every year. In Dream League Soccer 2023, we now have the ability to re-roll challenges, which is absolutely huge. I've been doing my daily challenges for about a month just before the update, and I found myself wishing to re-roll a challenge almost every single time. There are some daily challenges that I just don't like doing, and now I can switch them, which is just amazing. Now, I do have one criticism for this feature, is that we have to watch an ad in order to re-roll a quest. It would be nice if we had a uh, one free reroll every single day and then the rest could be done with ads but uh, you know what I'll take this another small improvement we saw was in facilities we can now see the perk we will be receiving for each level when clicking on the facility this lets us know what we are getting ahead of time instead of needing to upgrade the facility to view the perk for the next tier that was really appreciated we can also now see our gem rewards in dream league online which is something I didn't know I wanted but is still great but even with all that improvement in dream league soccer 2023 I still find it disappointing that we aren't able to preview your team in a real team event maybe next update we'll see so now that we've gotten that out of the way let's talk about gameplay in dream league soccer 2023 you're now able to change your tactic in the middle of the game instead of needing to pause the game and i think this is a good change because this adds one more variable in gameplay which is beneficial in my opinion also in the past i did say that i would like additional strategy when it comes to gameplay and uh, i think they fulfilled it Although I would have thought they would have done more of an in-game purchase, sort of like manager perks, like I suggested a while back. But uh, you know what? This one will do. I think they're headed in the right direction. Free kicks now don't always curl, and you're able to perform a knuckleball, making it a lot easier to score free kicks. I love this. Instead of trying to figure out where the ball will curl to like we used to when taking free kicks, you can now just aim straight where you want to shoot it and it will go in that direction. Um, seems pretty logical, but it's been t it's taken them this long to implement that. I would like to mention that I have scored way more free kicks after this update, so uh, yeah, stop slide tackling, stop giving free kicks, they're easier to score now. Another thing I like about this update is that long shots are still very good, except for the ones that your opponent takes that you think your goalkeeper will save, but won't. Also, the ones you hit the post but uh, other than that uh, yeah they're great and then another thing that goes hand in hand with long shots is that turnaround shots don't work anymore when your player is pointing away from goal and you turn around and fire towards the net it goes wide instead of into the net that is a lot more realistic shot, and I appreciate that although I will miss the turnaround shot. Uh, it worked wonders for me in the past you can now bring your players close to you for goal kicks which might not be as big of a deal to you as it is to me but no more goal kick giveaways at the end of the game that result in a draw instead of a win. Although there were some downsides to gameplay changes in this update, long ball spamming seems to be way more apparent, which isn't my favorite. Also, injuries and red cards are coming up a lot more frequently, which is not always the best. Although I did say this about injuries last year, and they seem to have decreased throughout the year, so maybe they'll make some change this year as well. But yes, um, sub off your players when they're tired. And uh, yeah, if they get injured... Sucks for you, I guess. And as for red cards, it's mayhem. They're so frequent now, and uh, yeah. So I guess just sli stop slide tackling and hope for the best. Just make sure you don't get the offside flag. That would be real bad. So now let's talk about Dream League Live, where there are two small changes that I want to talk about. The first one is that online divisions are now a lot easier to get promoted in, which is much appreciated, as I'm sure many of you guys know my struggle with promotion in online divisions in the past. And now I got promoted twice in a row. Division 5 for the win. Nice. And then the other thing to do with online is that every single game completed in Dream League Soccer will cycle the transfer market now. In the past, it used to be just career mode matches. Now it's career mode and live matches. Which means that players are no longer able to play through career mode and get the player they want to show up, then save enough coins to buy them by playing online, which is devastating. It is already hard enough to find players that you want on your team by playing through matches, and now when they show up finally and you don't have enough coins, well, you can't do anything about it. Your only option then is to keep playing to get more coins and hope the Dream League gods bless you 
and bring him back in the transfer market when you do have enough coins. What happened to the dream in Dream League Soccer first touch games? What do you have to say for yourself? Now you could grind exhibition mode if you're that desperate to get coins, but uh, yeah, let's face it, you, you barely get anything. Now I do see the other side to this change, which is that players may prefer to play online, but uh, still want to get new players. So if the majority of players are like this, they might dread playing through career mode trying to cycle the transfers for new players to show up and would rather play online to cycle the transfers. And maybe First Touch Games decided that more people would rather do this and play online to cycle the transfers, and it actually is a solid feature feature, but uh, I'm not really sure. Let me, let me know in the comments down below which one you prefer. Although, one thing to think about, what if the transfers changed for every career mode match as well as Dream League Live match, but did not change for every event match? I feel like that would be a solid compromise. This way, you can cycle the transfers by playing online, but if you want to save coins, you can just play events and uh, earn coins that way. I mean, you earn the most coins from events anyway, so why not that? So now, let's get into scenarios, and boy, don't get me started. Now, don't get me wrong, I love what First Touch games are doing, adding more things to do in the game, and adding more chances to get rewards is great. But Scenario Mode just has so much potential that they didn't do anything with it. I am holding on to hope that they will make it better in future updates, but for what it is now, let's do the review. For starters, when are they available? For a while, I never even saw a single scenario when I opened up the game. And since they weren't even mentioned in the update notes, I thought you guys in the comments were all part of an elaborate prank to trick me into thinking that Dream League Soccer 2023 had somewhat of an extreme mode. Why is this scheduling so random, and if there actually is a schedule, why doesn't it tell me when I open the game? This could easily be fixed by only having one scenario every single day just like your daily challenges, and you can label it the daily scenario so everybody knows it comes out daily. Then, the rewards. The rewards for completing scenarios are just plain boring. Not gems, not coaches, not scouts, not agents, just plain coins. Now, I do understand that it would be kind of overpowered if you got those rewards, but some of those scenarios that I've played we're pretty hard, okay? Which leads me to my next point. Why do we only get one attempt at the scenario? Tell me, First Touch Games, why? The point of an extreme mode or a mode like this was to make hard challenges that you would need multiple attempts and optimal luck to beat. This makes the player spend more time on the game and gives real satisfaction when they finally beat the challenge. If you lose the challenge in scenario, there is no satisfaction because it just goes away. When this scenario finally showed up when I opened the game, it was a very difficult one and I didn't even come close to beating it. And then I laughed out loud when it disappeared because I knew that I would never play scenarios ever again unless it was easy because it just wasn't worth it all right that concludes my rant on scenarios this is why i never did a video on scenarios because uh yeah i was saving it for this one let's move on dream league soccer 2023 added another nine kip templates they did this last year and uh, if they make this a yearly thing i think that would be great like i said before i do love me some customization so uh nothing bad to say here now perhaps the biggest addition in dream league soccer 2023 or their flagship new feature for dream league soccer 2023 is the 16 new formations that they added. First Touch Games has answered our prayers for more formations to be added to the game, and they did it with 16 new formations. They don't cost any more gems or coins to unlock, you just choose which group you want from the training facility, and boom. Even if I'm most likely to play with 4-3-3 all the time because I love that formation, it still gives me a lot more options and it also contributes to the additional skill to the game because we have more formations to play with. Amazing new feature for Dream Lake Soccer 2023. Great job, First Touch Games. I gotta give you credit for this one. And with that, those were all my opinions about the new update for Dream League Soccer. So to finish off this video, I'm gonna be going over my final hot takes about the update and finishing it off with a rating out of 10. First, I was definitely disappointed in the season pass. All they really added in this update was the premium pass, which is probably the last thing I would like them to copy from other games, to be honest. I would have liked something exclusive to the season pass, like emotes or even a kit template, since they seem to be adding them all the time, or even just having a new set of challenges for season pass owners only. But at least you can view your maximum tier you can get to on a given day of the season. 
Yay! Also, in this update, there is a new feature that I didn't really mention, which was after using a coach, you can spend double the regular cost of the coach that you used to coach the same players again. I honestly feel like this is a lame attempt of trying to give us what we want, which is to choose which players to coach. And yeah, I, I, it seems kind of lame, not gonna lie. I don't know who would actually use this, to be honest. Either just make a separate coach that costs double the gems that lets you choose, or just have that coach be winnable in events or season pass or even daily challenges. Like, I don't know. But yeah, not a fan of this feature. Don't know if anyone would actually use it since uh, it's still random which players they coach in the first place. It's You only get to choose uh, once the coach is done and it still costs double the gems. I mean, I don't know. I don't really like it. Unfortunately, no changes were made to the recruitment facility this year, so it still remains a waste of gems. Just win legendary agents for free from events and don't buy them with your gems, so you wouldn't need the discount anyway. I love that Lewandowski is now in the game. Thank you for transferring to Barcelona, Lewandowski. Love you, man. As well as there are so many new high-rated players, which is just great. Mbappe, Messi, De Bruyne, and Haaland all share the rating of 86. Maybe, just maybe, in Dream League Soccer 2024, we'll see our first ever 87 overall player. So, how do I rate this update out of 10? I am going to be going with a 6 out of 10, the same score I gave last year's update. We got new formations, as well as some good quality of life changes that were super great. So those were the two main reasons why I ranked it in the upper half of the 10, but there was just so much more potential that they could have done in this update, that alongside injuries red cards, as well as uh, the transfer switching with live matches. I just couldn't rate it over a six. Even if they did add scenarios that are sort of like the extreme mode I've been pitching, there was just a lot of things that they didn't do right with it or that I just didn't like. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with six. Although I will say if it's any consolation, I do think this update was better than last year's. Now, as I conclude my video, I am not trying to trash Dream League Soccer. I am just trying to make it the best game possible and sharing my opinions and thoughts. I feel like that will, will contribute to making it a better game and a better game for everyone so we can all have fun playing this great game. There was a lot of things that were great about this update, and I do appreciate all the hard work that First Touch Games does to make this game as best as possible. So yeah. Do you guys agree with my criticism? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you aren't already. Uh, like the video as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. If you want the definition of botched, don't watch the reality TV show, just play scenarios.